Hey, it's Brian Mudd. This is my cheat sheet for Tuesday, November 27th. Uh, I got some stuff on Cyber Monday and Facebook and Apple joining themselves at the hip. But it's actually a question. It's funny because um, over the weekend, I was with uh, some friends and family, and the question came up uh, a few different times. Hey, you're the money guy. What would you do if you won the lottery? And then I ended up receiving a couple of notes yesterday. I mean, it's fun to dream, right, in advance of uh, what might happen tomorrow. Right now. I'll answer that question for you, and I'll do so relatively happily. One of the keys to any of these types of retirement plans, especially when you come into a big sum of money, and here's a more applicable part of this to your life. Let's say that you don't win the Powerball because the odds of you raking that 425 plus million tomorrow, obviously not all that good. Probably have a better chance of coming into some money, whether it's an inheritance or you know a huge bonus because you just had a killer year at work, whatever the case may be. And this principle can somewhat apply to those types of situations too. First thing is to be disciplined. The biggest mistake that the average lottery winner makes is that they go, wow, I got all this money and now I can just do a bunch of stuff and then I'll think about it later. But of course, once that money's gone, that money's gone. So here's the first thing. You take the lump sum. An annuity, especially if you're uh, over the age of 40, really a bad idea because uh, ultimately, unless that ticket was in multiple names uh, and you're sharing that annuity across people, once you die, it's gone too. So really bad once you get older. But beyond that, generally not a good idea anyway because you can usually do better investing the money yourself than you would be able to do through the annuity even if you got the whole payout. So here's how this works. Let's go with the $425 million number. And it could actually be raised sometime today before tomorrow, but we'll start with that. If you take the lump sum payout, that goes to $278 million, all right? After taxes, because Uncle Sam is a guaranteed winner each and every time, that number drops to just under $209 million, $208 million and change net of lump sum and taxes, all right? So now this is your money, $208 million. First thing is, and this is me talking, you take care of those, and you take care of those that, because everybody says want to help others, uh, I happen to be of the, the tithing variety. So uh, I believe that you take 10% off the top, boom, that goes straight to uh, the religious institution of your choice. If you're not that kind of person, find your charitable causes, 10% off the top. So you just took about $20 million, uh, and change, and that's gone, all right? Here's the next thing. Everybody says they want to take care of friends and family. Okay, cool, do that. Take another 10%, take care of your friends and family. $20 million later, they're going to have a lot of stuff and probably be pretty happy with you. You're still in safe financial positions. Now, here's the next thing. We always want to do something for ourselves, right? Take another 10%. So you're taking $20 million for yourself, all right? And do what you're going to do. If that's buying ridiculous cars, if that's buying a ridiculous house, you can do a lot of that on $20 million. So do it. Do it. Get yourself in that lifestyle. Now, here's the reason you stop there. A lot of people that come into this money, what they'll do is buy all that stuff, but then you have to maintain it, right? And the carrying cost on multi, multi-million dollar mansions, that alone is a substantial sum of money. When you get into some of these, uh, you know, 10, 20, 30 million dollar mansions, the carrying cost in those things, by the time you get down with property taxes and you know, just keeping the lights on, uh, can be a million dollars a year. People don't realize that. So that's the reason we stop there and take it. Take the investment turn now. By the time you get done with all that, you're going to have about $145 million. So you've given to charity, you've given to friends and family, and you've increased dramatically your lifestyle. Now you have $145 million left. And depending upon your age, this is where it gets more complicated. I never want you to live on principal reduction. Don't want that. Unless you're near death and you have, well, $145 million on your hand. Otherwise, I want you to live off the interest. Now, here's the cool thing on this. Even at 1%, which is about all you get in fixed income these days, 1% on $145 million is $1.5 million a year. Not the worst thing in the world, but certainly not the best either. I would take a tiered approach. Uh, typically, one of my uh, favorite philosophies, buying uh, stocks that are more cash than debt, that pay a yield that is greater than what you can get in fixed income. If you do that right now, you can get an average rate of return of about 3.5% on dividends in the stock market with good companies. So now, rather than earning that $1.45 million per year, you've actually increased your actual income just off of your investment um, you know, to several million dollars, in the neighborhood of five or six. But I would leave maybe a third in stocks that produce that kind of yield. I would use about a third in short-duration investment uh, 
returns, and th that would be the variety of a CD, uh, maybe some better yielding money market accounts. It provides you with liquidity, access to the money very quickly, and you will still get a very low rate of return right now. And then I would take the other third, and I would take a look towards uh, bond or other types of investments, probably more so along the lines of some corporate bonds mixed in, maybe, maybe with some treasuries, which typically I don't like, but because the sum of money you're talking about, it'll provide uh, a rate of return that's acceptable to you. If you did the 333 plan there and you broke it up in a third and you lived off that income, your rate of return in today's market would probably be in the neighborhood of about four and a half million dollars off of that remaining 145 million. So you've taken care of a lot of folks. You have four and a half million dollars of income every year. And when you die, you're going to have a whole lot of money to hand off to your family. It's quite a legacy as well. So that's just one way of slicing it. Uh, as always, it, a lot of it has to do with your personal situation. Um, a couple quick hitters before we leave. Uh, one more reason to buy a home. Rate, uh, rents have risen the past two years. This year it was 4.1%. We now have next year's number. The average rent is set to rise around this country by 4.6%. So rent rates continue to rise above the rate of income right now. Uh, and if you needed any more motivation with record low mortgage rates, well, there you go. If you're on the fence, you're looking to buy, you have the money to do so, get in the housing market. It probably makes sense if you're going to be in place for three years or longer right now. Big day for economic data today. We'll break it all down for you tomorrow. It's a cheat sheet for today. Enjoy yours, and good luck on that lottery. See you tomorrow.